All right. Um, let's start the session. So, uh, good evening, good afternoon, and good morning, depending on which time zone you're joining us from. And a warm welcome to each one of you. Uh, thank you so much for taking your time to join this session. And yes, our topic for today is uh, transitioning your career from Scrum Master to Agile Coach. And uh, without taking uh, much time, I'm glad to introduce our speaker for today, Mr. Vijay. Uh, Vijay is a dedicated Agile enthusiast with over 18 years of experience in uh, Agile methodologies, professional coaching and program or and uh, project management. Uh, emphasizing the Agile Manifesto's first value, she, he prioritized individuals and interactions in um, his approach. So yeah, without any further ado, I would like to hand over the session to Vijay. Thank you, Soumya, and uh, a very good uh, evening or afternoon or early morning for the people joining from different parts of the world. So uh, today's topic, we are going to discuss on uh, the need of the hour, which is agile coaching, and uh, how do we transition our career from uh, a scrum master to an agile coach. So before we uh, start the session, I would like to ask a couple of questions, or not a couple of questions, rather try to understand what is that you guys see the difference between a Scrum Master and an Agile Coach. Normally, I talk about this in the class, trying to understand how the students or how uh, the companies perceive the role of an Agile Coach to that of a Scrum Master. And the objective here is to understand if you understand what is that that you're doing as Scrum Master or what it takes to be a Scrum Master versus where do we need to go as a Scrum Master to become an Agile Coach? If we can define the goal and the current reality, that would be a good point to start. So I know we have uh, 18 people on the bridge, I mean, excluding me and uh, saw me at 16. So yeah. if you can put a comment in the chat window about what is your expectation? Like what do agile coaches do differently from the toughest scrum master? I'll give you two minutes. Oh, I see scrum master coaches, a scrum team, agile coach does the same to others as well, like product owner, product management. Okay. Thank you, Amit, for the response. Any other thoughts? Okay, if anybody wants to talk, um, you can raise your hand. I can unmute. Uh, um, I can give you an option to unmute yourself. Is that okay with you, Vijay? Yes, absolutely. So I want this conversation to be more like a collaborative one because right now, before introducing me, you said like Vijay gives a lot of emphasis on individuals and interactions over processes and tools. So the more people can talk, then the better it will be the session. Yeah. You can raise your hands. I will allow you to talk. So in the meantime, I see Agile coaches are more involved in coaching and mentoring. Scrum Master has specific duties towards his team or teams. Uh, he does have certain responsibilities towards organization with respect to Agile. Okay. But this is an interesting comment. He does have some certain responsibilities towards organization with respect to Agile. Okay. So I do see Scrum Master is on the Scope of work is managing, removing impediments, but as a coach, it is more about how to make the team work. Mm -hmm. Agile coach can be one who coaches scrum masters, coaching a level higher. Okay. I'm just reading through the comments because there are so many. So, uh, Agile framework is understood. Now, pretty interesting word there Agile framework. So, do we have an Agile framework? Okay, so we have SAFE as a framework, we have Scrum as a framework. Uh, the Scrum Master is assigned to a team, Agile Coach is not specific in a team. Pre meeting, do planning. Okay, all right. So I do see that there are different perspectives on what an Agile Coach does. So uh, before getting into like what Agile Coaching is, I would like to, uh, I hope. Everyone is from, uh, I don't see the, okay, I can do this here. So I'm just trying to see. 
I hope most of you are from India and you are aware of the Indian education system. So let me bring a uh, reference from there. So in India, we have uh, multiple competitive examinations like bank probationary officer. So we have a PO exam. Similarly, we have an entrance exam for uh, joining the defenses, like which is combined defense services. CDS exam is there. In the same way, we have uh, a UPSC civil examination where we can get into IAS, IPS, and all. Now, if you see the three exam patterns, like all of them will have general studies, all of them will have uh, uh, a uh, group discussion. Of course, UPSC will have another paper mains. So my point here is that, can you guys tell me what is the qualification to qualify for uh, PO, I mean, to, to attempt the exam, like the probationary officer or the CDS or the UPSC? What's the qualification? Graduate, yes. So if you are a graduate, you can go for a PO, you can go for a CDS exam, you can go for a UPSC exam. That's wonderful. Now, does it matter whether you are an MBBS graduate or a BCom graduate or an engineering graduate? It doesn't matter. All you have to be is a graduate. Now, in the same way, there are three levels of coaching that we see in an organization. One is more like a coaching at a team level. And the other one is coaching at a multi-team level. And then the third one, coaching at a organization level. These are the three basic coaching uh, opportunities that we see in an organization. So when we look at the uh, uh, multiple coaching opportunities, Give me one moment. I'm trying to bring a visual here so that we can have more focused conversation. Give me one moment. So what we see there is like at a team level, we have someone who is coaching the team so that they all can align on the team objective. They all can uh, look at what is more beneficial for the team and then go with the uh, team level objectives. Now, at the same time, we have a multi-team level, like multiple teams, like 10 teams, 15 teams, five teams, six teams. So at a multi-team level, we have another person or another role, which is planning to show us or, or which is planning to guide us at what is that you need to do. So like, how can I, how, how can one uh, synchronize the efforts? How, how one can uh, bring uh, alignment across multiple teams and their objectives. So there is one person who is doing it eh, at a multi-team level. And then we also have another person who is working with multiple departments, multiple LOBs of the organization so that he can or she can uh, bring a lot of value into the organization. So if you see there on the screen, I see organizational level, a program level, and then we have a... Uh, team level, and then individual level, and then itself. These are the multiple coaching opportunities. Now, in this, the person who is going to stay or the person who is going to work at a team level, a team level coach, this is more synonymous most of the time with our Scrum Master. And as you see, we have a multi-team level person who is coaching is an agile coach, and then we have an enterprise agile coach. Now, why do we need to have three types of coaches? I mean, why cannot one scrum master go ahead and uh, become the, the organization level coach? Like how somebody said, if you see, what are the three roles of an ad scrum master? There are specifically three responsibilities of a scrum master. One is service to the team, and service to the PO, and there is one more service to the organization. So what does the Scrum Master do 
when we say service to the organization so it is also more or less like a coaching the organization you can take it if you see organizations what they do is hey i have my uh, scrum master and what does my agile coach do my agile coaches my my agile coaches only talk to the team i don't see any deliverable or i don't see any uh, reports being done or i don't see any of tangible work which i can measure saying that like for a developer you have i have like 20 stories i have completed or 20 test cases i have run or i have automated so people see that an agile coach has nothing to do in 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 the organization so let's understand why we need to have a graduate at uh, i mean no, not sorry why why we need to have an agile coach in an organization so let's say if you if you look at the organizational hierarchy in the organization we have let's say most of the time we have a vice president here and after the vice president we will have a director or an executive director and then we have uh, most of the organization will have a uh, associate director or something like this and then you have a senior manager and then you have a manager to whom the teams the development teams the scrum teams they all report to so what happens is most of the time the vice presidents they are all aligned with the agile transformation they want the organization to move to agile now people who are at the team level yes they are also very enthusiastic they want to go with agile they want to implement they want to make change so they are also fully into uh, transforming things into agile okay so now what happens in between let's say there is a scrum master who is working with one team and the scrum master has some issue he has some impediment he has some organizational issue or he wants to get alignment across multiple teams the scrum master of one team let's say there are four teams working on say product backlog now when you have four teams working on the same product backlog let's say there is some data that you need or there is some dependency that you need to work on and one team manager says hey i need uh, this task to be done fast and the other one says no no, no we have a different priority so what does the scrum master do the scrum masters of the multiple teams they try to align they try to see how and then let's say they go to the manager so once they go to the manager if the manager has that kind of inclination towards collaboration value over planning all of that he will say yes if not then who is going to work with these two guys let's say the senior manager and manager are aligned to the objective of the team to the objective of the organization that's a happy path scenario but most of the time happy path scenarios are only ideal and uh, we always see a lot of friction we always see a lot of uh, challenges agree to disagree moments conflict and misaligned opportunities all of them we see it. now when the scrum master is busy with the team trying to make the team trying to remove the impediment from the team who is going to work with these two guys to get the alignment obviously there should be one role and that role is your agile coach role so the objective of the agile coach is to ensure that the multiple teams are aligned with the overall objective of the organization also if there are any opportunities for ensuring that hey teams need a different skill let's take a scrum master the very name itself says scrum master is a very proficient person in scrum so the scrum master is very proficient in scrum now let's say we have 10 15 teams which have been working on scrum and you all know that scrum works very well in a complex adaptive environment where more is unknown than known in order to bring down the risk we go with an iterative and incremental approach where scrum is very beneficial 
now let's say over a period of 10 sprints 15 sprints uh okay i'll answer that question okay so over a period of uh, 15 sprints 20 sprints let's say we have uh, the teams coming back and saying hey uh, hey scrum master i see that we are trying to deliver things but there are a lot of priorities that are changing we have a lot of stakeholders we have a lot of dependencies now how do we resolve all of this in uh, using scrum maybe we need to come up with a different approach maybe we need to see what can fit our bill and how we can be more agile than restricting ourselves to scrum so at that time how does a scrum master respond so there should be some person there should be someone who is more experienced who has seen multiple frameworks who understands multiple frameworks and also can devise or, or try to see what can make more sense to the team and then that person is the agile coach now i see there is a question in the chat which says how does that differ from a delivery lead and a delivery manager so in order to understand that let me let me try to Let me try to draw a figure here, and then maybe I can explain you this. Okay. So, if you see in waterfall, I'm not saying that waterfall is bad, but when we take reference to waterfall way of working, we have a two year lengthy project, and this project, our scope is fixed. Okay, our scope is fixed. And where is it? Where am I right? Give me one moment. I'm trying to get the white place. Okay, give me one moment. Now, if you see, let's say this is a two year project. Okay, now in this two year project, we have, we need to deliver, let's say, 100 requirements. And for this, what do we do normally? We devise a plan. So we have a project plan where we have an estimated cost, we have an estimated schedule. And then whatever we have signed up with the clients at the very beginning of the session or at the very beginning of the project implementation, we have a base plan. And all the time, our job as a project manager, our job as a delivery lead, our job as a delivery manager is to ensure that the milestones are met is to ensure that the schedule is messed, the schedule is met and the cost is met. So that is what normally an agile delivery or a lead manager does. Now, thank you for clarification. It says agile delivery lead or agile delivery manager. It is, uh, I don't want to, uh, uh, and I'm trying to see if I can use a very subtle term for that. So, Agile is one part, delivery is one part, and manager is one part. They are three different terms. If I ask you, hey, can I play hockey, football, snooker? So let's say I don't have a football. So what I would do is I would take a snooker ball and then I want to play it with a hockey stick and I call it as a hockey football, snooker, then it doesn't become hockey or it doesn't become football, it doesn't become snooker. Okay. So I would I would ask you, Paul, that if you have a specific question, please put the question a little elaborate because I cannot keep concentrating on uh, changing your question all the time. So if you have once you have completed your question, please put that and I would be more specific in answering your question. Thank you for understanding. Okay. So let me complete this, what I was trying to say. So what is the difference between a lead and a manager? I'm just trying to help you with that and how a coach is different from that because I was carried away by the question that was put in the first place. So here, the objective of a lead or a manager is to follow through what has been already presented. Okay. Now, how does a coach differ from there? Now, coaches, they don't assume delivery responsibilities. They don't take delivery responsibilities. They are more in building up 
the team, the team dynamics. So if you look at any framework, the framework has a set of practices, the framework has a set of rules, regulations to follow. Whereas agile coaching is more about how we can coach a team as a system, an organization as a system, and how we can improve the dynamics of a team rather than trying to follow a certain policies and procedures. So agile coaching is more dependent on the manifesto rather than on a specific framework that we are looking at. So that would be uh, that would be uh, a specific outlook on how it is different from an agile delivery lead or an agile uh, uh, manager. Because the role of an agile delivery lead and the manager is to ensure that whatever has been put forth in the momentum is delivered. The biggest challenge here is that many organizations, what they do, the reason why we have an agile delivery lead or an agile delivery manager role in the organization is somehow or somewhere on the top, like let's say you have your CEO, CFO, or a product management or a senior product management or at a portfolio level, someone has a two-year project and they are very good at mathematics. What they do is, hey, two years means we have 52 into two weeks. That is around 52 sprints. So we have 100 requirements. So we have 52 sprints and 100 requirements. So what is that they do? Each sprint has to, each sprint has to have a outcome or a goal or a delivery of somewhere around 100 by 52. That is what most of the organization do. So when they have this whole, oh, the overall picture is already set, but we are trying to do everything in sprints. So we do have a, a specific outcome or a specific goal or a specific milestone for the sprint. So that is the place you will get an agile delivery lead or an agile delivery project manager or an uh, uh, agile delivery uh, manager, that kind of target where the milestone is already set somewhere. And then all we are trying to do, we are trying to deliver that milestone in sprints. That is one of the reasons why you see that kind of stuff. Okay. Now, what do an agile coach do with respect to, uh, with respect to the organization? So in an organization, what we have is we see, as I was trying to tell you, there is something called an ignorance of, sorry, an iceberg of ignorance. So I'm trying to write here. So there is an iceberg of ignorance. So there is an iceberg. Let's say this is an iceberg. Okay. So now in this iceberg of ignorance, I think I have drawn the iceberg in the different way. Sorry. So the iceberg of ignorance is like this. Now at the top, you have the senior leaders. And at the bottom, you have the team members who are working on the ground. Now, the top management, they always see that, hey, we have only 4% of issues. Now, if you ask a senior leader in the organization, they say, oh, my organization is completely agile. We don't have any issues. Now, when you ask a person who is at the bottom, who is at the very uh, end, and at the foot of the uh, mountain, if you ask them how many problems you have, maybe they will give you a big laundry list of issues which they see. We don't have right estimation. We don't have automation. We don't have this. We don't have that. So probably they'll give you a lot of a uh, lot of uh, uh, impediments, a lot of issues and all. Now, if you keep coming down from the senior management to the team level, the 4% becomes a 15% at director level, a 70 to 80% at a manager, senior manager level, and at a team level, it becomes 100%. So what does an agile coach do? The job of an agile coach is more towards how we can make the senior leadership listen and understand and promote agility in the audience. So when I say the leadership is trying to understand and help the teammates, 
if there are any issues that they need to be bubbled down. How do we align that impediments to the overall agility of the organization so that connecting the issues at the ground to the objectives of the agile transformation, who does it? The agile coach does it. Now, while the agile coach is trying to help the leaders understand the pain points of the team, at the same time, an agile coach's job to the managers, first level managers, and to the teams and scrum masters is more towards how the teams can empower themselves. So empowering, it reminds me of a very uh, interesting uh, change of things. Okay, Back in the day when I, in, in, in 2007, 2008, whenever I was in doubt, I used to Google. So when I don't know any information, I used to Google. That is, I used to depend on a tool. I don't know something, so I want to check on the tool. Over a period of time, as and when I became an Agile co I mean, Scrum Master and then to an Agile Coach, I was trying to emphasize on when in doubt, empower yourself. That is, when you have a situation where you don't know whether to do it or not, empower yourself to take a decision. Be accountable and then go with it. That is what my mentality was. That is like I was trying to empower myself. I was trying to take accountability. I was trying to take charge of the system or situation. Over a period of time, as I became a more of a professional coach and more of a uh, uh, facilitator kind of thing. Nowadays, what I say is like, when in doubt, communicate more. So if you see the, the very first value of the Agile Manifesto, which is individuals and interactions over processes and tools, if you see, when you are in doubt, you are looking for a tool, you are dependent on a tool. Now, second time when you're in doubt, you are empowering yourself. And in the third stage, or in the much more evolutionary stage, I was trying to help people communicate, help people learn. Okay. So exactly, an agile coach's job is to the teams and to the first level managers and others is to help them get empowered and also ensure that there is communication across the multiple teams. Okay. So this is what mostly an Agile coach does. Now, how do Agile coaches do this? So what do Agile coaches have in order to do all this? They don't have a framework. Uh, they don't have a, a specific set of rules, regulations, or KRAs, or anything of that sort. Now, how do they do this? Now, before I go to that topic, let me try to give me one moment. I'm just cutting there. Give me one. So if you look at the responsibilities of an agile coach or what does an agile coach do, then where is so yes, it is here. My brain. Okay, this one. So an agile coach's job is always at looked through two lenses, or maybe we can say it as that there is always, or, or there are always two variables that an agile coach have to look for. One is, what is the result that I'm going to achieve as an agile coach? So if I'm going to coach my teams, what is the outcome that I'm looking at? So it is more on the result part. And the second one is, how long my teams will be dependent on me as an agile coach. Because if you even look at Scrum, Scrum says that the objective of a Scrum master is to promote self-organizing and self-managing capability in the team. Similarly, 
the objective of an agile coach is also to promote self reliability to promote uh, uh the team in such a way that they are not dependent on me so one is more towards result and one is more towards growth of the team so now as and when there is a situation that comes in someone comes to you and says hey i need help from you coach help from you agile coach so at that time it completely depends on or it is the prerogative of the agile coach to choose whether he has to take an action to provide or or to ensure that we are getting results or is it a point where i can help the person become independent that is grow the person now this is very similar to how you play cricket okay so when you are playing cricket a batsman can straight drive you straight drive long on long off or he can pull he can square cut he can front foot back foot hook all these are like different shots in the kitty of the batsman when does the batsman choose whether he has to go front foot and then play the ball or whether he has to take a back back foot or whether to sweep or he all takes a decision in a split second like he is he takes the decision after seeing the pitch of the ball so based on the delivery the batsman chooses how to play it in the same way based on the situation an agile coach tries to see how he can use that opportunity either to promote the results or either to promote the growth of the client team or individual how does he do it so if you see here there are nine different stances or nine different acts or you can say nine different roles that an agile coach can take so based on the need based on the responsibility for the results of the client so if i am more responsible to the results of the client i'm going this way now if i'm more responsible towards the growth of the client i am moving this way now in organizations any organizations for that part if a developer has a question or if a scrum master has a question if a manager has a question or if they have some confusion or if they need some clarity or things are a little ambiguous hey i don't know this so the immediate answer is go ask your coach your coach will help you so when the teams do not know something when the teams are not in a stage to to find out let's say they even don't know what they don't know so in those places we are there to guide the teams as a hands on expert so here we are the people who know the end to end mechanisms so that is where we say hey do it like this now if you see agile consultants who come in the organization says hey we are like 2000 people we are in a semi banking industry we have insurance products as well we have 10 products our revenue is this much our customers are in different different countries so you key in the input to the consultant the consultant says beep 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 he will work on something and in the end he says hey you go and use so and so framework you split your teams like this you have a product backlog you use jira so the consultant is going to give the entire end to end solution for the organization and also when they are like going through that motion like going through the transformation thing they might also be there hey i want to hire you as an external advisor so anytime our teams have some questions you can come and advise us the most of the time many organizations look for an agile coach who is more of an advisor and a consultant who can do everything if i am advising if i am like trying to uh, give every solution to the team the team is completely dependent on me but as a coach i need to slowly transition them to the place where they can be independent now how do i do that so when the teams don't know okay so when the teams don't know about anything 
then slowly we start teaching them. Hey, this is how we are going to do it. This is how we are going to uh, uh, learn this. Or well, let's say the team doesn't know automation testing. Maybe I can teach them BDD. I can teach them DDD as an agile coach. And that is where we take the role of a teacher. So we slowly move from a consultant to a teacher role. And once we teach them, once we teach them the skill, once we have the skill imparted to the team, then we take the role of a mentor. So when I say we take a role of a mentor, a mentor is a more experienced person in a specific domain. And he works with a new person, I mean, with the person who has like less experience in that specific domain. And the objective is to ensure that the less experienced person is more competent over a period of time. So as and when we start teaching them, they already have the skill. And slowly by hand-holding them, by trying to use different mentoring techniques, we try to move them to a place where they can be completely good. Now, there ends the story. Now, that is the place where, as an Agile coach, our job is done. That is what most of the organizations think. So that is why you see people think that, oh, the Agile coach has come, he has trained us, and then my teams are my, my teams are scrumming, they're doing daily scrum, they're doing sprint planning, sprint retrospective, everything looks good, we have all the metrics, so we don't need the coach. That is where they drop the ball. But what happens is, all this time we have been trying to train the people, mentor the people, advise and hang, and, and, and try to get them to a place where they can do things. Now, beyond this, it's like doing the repetitive work, doing doing the same thing like, okay, Scrum, I'm going to do it, and people do it. Now, apart from this, as a person who is going to deliver results for the client, the Agile coach's other use or, or the way how he has not utilized his capacity or competency to the fullest is towards the growth of the client. So how do we help teams, individuals, and organizations grow? Okay. So that is where we get other parts of the stances here that an agile coach can help or can facilitate the growth of the client or the teams by facilitating their events. So facilitation is, People might think, oh, facilitation is what? Facilitation is only like I have to go. I have to set up a meeting. I have to open the bridge. Everybody will come. I'll take a roll call and then boom, I let them go. And then in the end, I'll close. I'll send minutes. That is not facilitation. That facilitation itself is a big body of knowledge. So facilitation is more like how a person can be there in a very neutral stance and then try to help all parties involved in the discussion to move towards their specific objective. So most of the time, if you see, people find that, hey, retrospectives are a waste of time. That is a common uh, 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 theme that we can observe in many of the organizations. People are like more, hey, we'll go to retrospectives in the first two, three, four, five sprints. After that, slowly, slowly, the effectiveness, the engagement, and the energy levels in the retrospectives comes down. What's going wrong? There is nothing wrong. The problem is how the meeting is going to be facilitated. That is where they have a problem. That is what we call as a retrospective deacon. Now, who can revive those kind of things? An agile coach can do that. Now, let's say we have a very specific, very big product planning. Then do I have the necessary skills? Because a Scrum Master works with only like what? A bunch of people, 10 people, 15 people. Let's say there are 100 people in the organization. I have to facilitate a 100 people uh, uh, meeting and I have only one hour. How can somebody facilitate that kind of meeting with 100 people? So you, need, you need a master facilitator. And who has that master facilitation skills? An agile coach. Now, sometimes what happens is you might see in organizations that there are very good teams. Teams will be performing. They are like very good over a period of time. Two years, three years, they have been star team. What happens to any star team? What goes up will come down. So at one point of time, 
whatever be the star team they all will become more and more uh, i would say uh, let let me try to put it this way the performance of the star team might slowly come down what makes it come down because the team doesn't see that there is always a problem with the renewal of the team so if we have an objective for the team and the team achieves the objective then how do we renew the team's energy how do we renew the team's productiveness how can we keep the high performing team on the high performing zoner all the time or maybe sometime like people as i was saying that people think that okay the agile coach's job is done we don't need an agile coach anymore but an agile coach helps a lot in the growth of the team by playing the role of a facilitator and by playing the role of a visionary so these are like mostly towards the growth of the team now what if i want the best of the both i am hard trying to hire you only for i'm not i'm not trying to hire you only for the results i'm not trying to hire you for only my growth of the team but i want a mix of both my team should be independent my team should be on the journey of high performance and being independent at the same time i want you to also deliver the results for me so when you want the growth and the results to be the top to the to be the highest that is where we have two more responsibilities of an agile coach which are more towards coaching and partnering now this coaching is called professional coaching not agile coaching so agile coaching is a mix of all these nine stances whereas professional coaching is entirely like facilitation it's also an entirely different body of knowledge where by definition professional coaching is partnering with the client or partnering with the team or with the individual and taking them through a thought provoking and creative journey to maximize their individual i mean professional and personal performance in our current uncertain and uh, complex world so that is the very definition of the professional coaching so what here happens is let's say for example one of you wants to become a olympic runner they want to take part in olympics so first what do they do they say hey i want to become an olympic runner the first thing is do you know how to run you don't know how to run so first you'll go to a person like a running club and all what is that i need to do so somebody will teach you how to start running how to maintain your time what diet you need to take so they'll teach you so you are running for 3 months 6 months 1 year you became very competent you can run now you went and participated in a race you failed miserably because you have the strength you have the capacity you have the capability but you don't have the technique who will teach you a technique now what you do is okay i need to learn the technique so you go to a person who is like already an olympic runner who is like very good in running you go and you seek him as your mentor so what he does is you whatever skill you have already he is going to hone that skill he is going to bring you some technique he is going to make you tweak your skills here and there so that you are more competent towards olympic running let's say you did that for the india level running championship you won the medal now you are selected for olympic now what is your state at that time you are a very competent runner from a place of 1 billion plus odd people you are the only one person who has won the race and you are representing the country you go to the olympic village and then you see the other finalists let's say in the other finalists you have usain bolt you have I mean, because it's a uh, assumption let's take you have carl lewis you have ben johnson all the famous runners let's say 
it's like a master race and every person who has been on the top list of running is there so what will be your mental state though you have enough competency though you have enough skill morally or psychologically or from a thought process perspective you will be thinking oh can i win this race or not or what if the other person is better than me what if i am not able to uh, uh, give my complete performance so that is the place where somebody will come and talk to you to bring back your confidence to make you get into the race by only depending on your skills and not looking at the other factors that person is a coach what is he doing is not bringing you any competency is not bringing you any skill is just trying to bring clarity into your thoughts in the same way sometimes when we are looking at the problem solution sometimes when you are looking at uh, uh the way how we can collaborate now for example some teams know what is the objective that they want to achieve but they might not know how to achieve it they don't have clarity on how to get to the goal or some people might say hey when you get into an organization they are trying to do it in a different way or they are thinking that there is only one solution for a problem and you ask them hey why are you doing it like this some teams might answer you know we have tried everything under the sun there is no alternative this is the only solution that we have the moment people say this is the only solution that is where they are missing the forest for the trees that means they are not looking at a perspective where there are multiple options always let's see in coaching the vantage point matters so the place where you see a problem is entirely different it changes the perception i mean i give more of the food examples and uh, game examples I'll, i'll give you one more example now when you are playing chess when you are playing chess you might not see some great moves but when you are standing right next to some players who are playing chess you might get great, great moves the only thing that is different is that you have moved your position from a person within the problem to a person who is outside the problem for example that is one of the technique we call as perspective shifting so sometimes when people are in the situation they might not see multiple alternatives or they might not see any alternate that is where as a coach we come in and then as a professional coach we come in and then we try to work with them by using techniques like perspective shifting change their vantage point and then let them see like multiple alternatives that can be one thing and maybe some people know that hey i have to do this i have to deliver this i have to work on this i need to send this report to my client i need to share this data with my client i need to ask my manager about this issue or i need to bring this impediment to my scrum master there can be so many things so people don't want to do that people know that they have to do this but they choose not to do that it can be because of fear so fear at a uh, 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 what do you call more intense level agile coaches we don't handle but if anybody has an apprehension towards something then definitely as a coach as a professional coach we are going to help them so similarly partnering partnering means i give you a small example here let's say you get in as an agile coach or let me try to put it in different way there is a scrum master a scrum master is working in xyz organization his roles and duties are same scrum master goes to abc organization his roles and responsibilities will be the same scrum master goes to a 1 to 3 organization his roles and responsibilities are same now you take an agile coach now when an agile coach goes to an organization let's say he has four teams and all the four teams requirements will be different because one team might be asking them to teach or to let them uh, uh, let them uh, uh, learn something new maybe a couple of teams might say hey we know everything you don't need to disturb us or like whenever we need some help we can come to you or maybe some teams are like hey coach we want you to completely involve with us so the requirements of the coach they are all different so what we do is whenever we enter an organization as an agile coach we try to partner with the team we try to work with the team 
to see that there is a value for both of us. So I'm not going to use the same cookie cutter approach with all my teams. My approach towards each of my team will be completely independent and is completely dependent on what the team needs from me as a coach rather than what I can give them as a coach. So that is how we partner. So all in all, if you see that if you want to move or if you, if you want to move from a place of scrum master to an agile coach, the easiest way is to move from, uh, and I'm not saying that scrum is not good at all. No, that was not, that is not my intention. Scrum is an excellent framework. And when you're trying to emphasize more on the implementation of Scrum, the roles and responsibilities or the onus of an Agile coach changes to how you can evangelize the Agile manifesto within the organization. So when we say Agile manifesto, its values, its principles based on the teams, based on the kind of collaboration activities or the opportunities for collaboration across organization. And that is where an Agile coach has to play more role in trying to bridge the teams, individuals, and the leadership. Now, there is one more aspect of it. There is an enterprise agile coach also, right? So enterprise agile coach is more like a little bit more on the responsibility side where he works with multiple, uh, I won't say departments, but multiple aspects, facets of the organization. So he has the end-to-end responsibility of the transformation. Now, if I have to put things into perspective, Agile transformation is not a framework transformation. So like how we think about, oh, I want to go Agile. So let all my teams certified in Scrum, certified in SAFE, certified in Kanban. That's a framework. That's a means to be Agile. But that doesn't make the organization Agile. So Agile transformation is more like a organizational change management process. So in that process, there has to be a plan. There has to be like multiple things involved. And most of the time, an enterprise Agile coach in conjunction with the leadership, he's going to devise that plan at a very strategic level. And who is the one who is going to bear that? I mean, who is going to take that into motion and continue the momentum in the organization? That person is the Agile coach. So that is how an Agile coach's job can be defined more in an organization. But I see that we have been around, like, what, 45 minutes I've been talking. So I'll pause and then I'll see if you guys have any questions and then we can make it like more uh, a QA session. Soumya, that would be my session. And if you can help facilitate if people are raising hands and then if you can unmute them, that would be great. Yes, yes, Rujai. Yeah, I think uh, mm -hmm. we have a question from Keshava in the chat. Yes, that's what I'm reading. So, Keshava, thank you for that question. So, as I said, can I become an Agile coach without a Scrum Master's experience? I would definitely say yes. However, it is more like this. Okay. Again, I'm going to a cricket example. Pardon me for that. But can I become an empire without playing cricket? Absolutely, you can become an empire. But will it benefit me if I play cricket for 15 years and then become an agile, become an empire? There is a lot of difference between these two. In the same way, what I'm trying to say is that if, if, if you can play the role of a scrum master for an year or two years, add it with your experience, it can definitely help you to understand the perspective of what goes within the team. I know you have completed a CSP, of course, CSP courses, completion of CSP courses is wonderful. At the same time, I would also invite you to work for me at least to get the hang of what a Scrum Master does. And once it is done, probably you can uh, uh, transition your role into an Agile coach. So that would be my answer for your question. 
All right, hope that um answered your question, Keshava. Anybody else who wants to talk, I can allow them to talk also. You please raise your hands. You can directly talk to Vijay. Okay, there's one more question from Keshava. What is the impact of AI on Agile Coach Scrum Master roles with all data fed into Jira and tools are going? The AI way even retrospective suggestions can come by AI. This was discussed to an earlier session by Jeff Sutherland. Okay. So, <laughs> let me try to put this question in a different perspective, okay? When I was working in a previous organization, we have a cross panel interview for uh, becoming a manager. So in the cross panel interview, it's like what, seven years, eight years back. And in the cross panel interview, there was a delivery head and the delivery head asked me this question. Hey Vijay, I see that you are managing the Scrum, Agile, release management and all of this, right? Now tomorrow, if everything gets automated, what will happen to your position? That is what exactly the final question that guy asked me. So what I said was, see, if everything gets automated, there will be at least one role where someone will go into a data center and turn the switch on for that particular server, and that would be me. So, I mean, if you understand the perspective of this question, what I'm saying is the human intelligence can never be compared with AI. That is that that is that is something uh, which whether people agree or not agree, that's the fact. Okay. Now, how much of AI can be brought into agile people creation and all? I mean, see, when things are very routine or when things are anticipated, expected, those things can be do. But looking from an innovation perspective, looking for at a point, I mean, looking from a point of how the interactions between people can bring what kind of ideas that can never be mimicked, that can never be done by AI, okay? So people think that, I mean, if there are like so many discussions on LinkedIn, I don't want to spend more time on that because there are better people who have given their opinion on this. But what my perspective is, it is just a phase where because of the overwhelming uh, news communication on AI, people think that, oh, AI can overtake us. but that can never be done. That is what I would say. Okay. I, I completely respect what was discussed in Jeff Sutherland's session, but it is my perception because I'm hosting this session. Thank you. Yes, thanks, Keshwam. Okay. What are the best practices to think as an Agile coach? Yeah, this is, this is a very uh, difficult question. So Rajeshwari, uh, the very first thing that comes into picture when we want to become an Agile coach is self-awareness. So if you want to think like an Agile coach, the very fundamental and first thing that you have to uh, uh, practice is self-awareness. So self-awareness helps you, let's say, I want my team to be independent. And every time I'm jumping in, I'm micromanaging them. I'm trying to ensure that hey, things are in control and I'm trying to command and control them. So maybe there are times where people will give you feedback on your face or maybe there are times people don't want to uh, give you any feedback. So at that time, who is going to build the candle? Who is going to help you understand that you are doing it like this? Self-awareness. So even if you see the nine stances that we have here, hey, Am I playing a teacher role when I have to be a mentor? Or am I, paying a, am I uh, playing a role of a consultant when I'm supposed to play the role of a professional coach? So nobody is going to tell you explicitly that this is what you need to do. So self-awareness, if you can improve your self-awareness, then that will self in turn will help you think more like an Agile coach. That's the answer to that. And uh, one more question I saw. Teams, emotional needs, motivational requirements cannot be replaced yet. Wonderful. Thank you, Deepak. Okay, Mahesh. Mahesh. I mean, yeah. yeah. So, Mahesh, before I answer your question, how much time we have left? 
Soumya. Uh, we have 10 more, 10 more minutes. 10 more minutes. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Mahesh, please go ahead. Yes, sir. I'll make it really quick. Firstly, I just want to thank you for all the insights that you've provided us. So we start with that. But my question is, uh, on behalf of the two other uh, Agile coaches that I have in my team, uh, I want to ask you this question. So you did mention, uh, you know, at some point when all the teams are, you know, performing well, in terms of, you know, the leadership would actually think of, yeah, this is working well. Agile coaches have done uh, what they, what we wanted them to do. Now it's like, thank you, goodbye. You know, if they have that mentality, how can we as agile coaches proactive, proactively, you know, make them think that, well, our job is not done. There is more to go. How can we as agile coaches do that proactively? So, In, thank you, Mahesh, for that question. Okay. So, see, in order to do that proactively, okay, so this has to be dealt at, a, at a more of like a uh, senior leaders and that kind of people. So, always, at any point of time, there should be a clear cut clarity on what is that the team has to do and what is that we need to do okay that is the first thing now the reason why we need to have that is whenever we see that our objectives are being done okay that is where we have to work with the team to see what is the next best thing that they can do so that is where you have a complete cycle of things hey i want to go from point a to point b and by midway through b or by by when we are about to reach to b and that is a place where we need to again work with the team to see, hey, what is the next play, next thing from B to C? So if we can keep identifying the next level of goals for the team on a continuous basis, this we call as, uh, there is a wonderful term called designing an alliance. So when, when we can create that alliance with the teams every now and then to find out the next best opportunities, that is where we always have a target to achieve right after this. That is one way. So the second way is, at the same time, we also need to educate the leaders that when the team works as a, uh, I mean, if, if you call it like it's more of a system, the team is more of a system, the organization is more of a system, and the more and more interactions we have within the system, the system keeps on gaining knowledge. Maybe it can it can result in a conflict, maybe it can result in alignment. So there will be always an, ex an unexpected outcome because of the systemic reactions that we have within the system. So who is going to identify those and then who is going to work with them? An agile coach. So if we can make the leaders understand that as a human system, we are going to ever evolve. I mean, we are, we are in a continuously evolving path and there is always someone who has to work with them to bring them or to guide them towards the expected results. Then agile coach position is always relevant. Very good, sir. Thank you. You're welcome, Mahesh. Thank you. And Deepak says, oh, there are two questions. And I think after these two questions, our time will be up. So I just want to uh, keep you guys updated on the timing. So what if the leadership works on choose and pick and does not allow to implement required solution? See, what if the leadership does, we cannot do anything. For example, for example, it is very little crude example, but I want you to understand. Elon Musk bought Twitter. And he says, I want to close Twitter. Let's say I'm an agile coach in Twitter. What can I do? I cannot do anything. Now, let's say, Elon Musk comes to me and says, hey, Vijay, I want to close Twitter, but I want you to ask you like how it is going to benefit me or what is that we can do or is there anything that I can do better? That is the time there is a window of opportunity for me to even consult, for me to even give him some suggestion and do that. Now, if people think unilaterally and then because they have power and then they want to take decisions, coaching is not, coaching doesn't have any role. Okay. We cannot coach people if they don't want to be coached. 
I want you guys to be very cognizant of that point that if somebody doesn't want to be coached, we cannot coach them. That is what is the answer for that question. And Deepak is asking me, what is the current reality in the market? Is an agile coach a fancy type for senior scrum master or do we really find a lot of agile coaches doing the responsibility specified by you? Because I think we still do not have a super good clarity about this role in industry. As I said, many organizations hire agile coaches for the role of a, for, for, for achieving results. So I'm like, hey, I want to have, like, I want to achieve this so-and-so result. So I hired a coach and once I met my target, I'm going to take off the coach. That is what is the, the reality right now. But agile coaching is a pretty new competency that has come in. It's been like, what, past 20 years? So there is still a lot of evolution that happens in the agile coaches, I mean, in the, the agile coach real, because professional coaching also, maybe in India, people don't understand, but in US, UK, there is a lot of scope for professional coaching. So right now, as you asked me, is it, senior, is, is it a fancy title of a senior scrum master? People see that they are hierarchical and they want to move from a scrum master to a senior scrum master to an agile coach to an enterprise agile coach. As I said, all the roles require the same kind of competence limit different levels of competency, but the same set of skills. So I wouldn't say it's a fancy title, but it is an individual choice that in order to prove themselves that they have become better at something, instead of improving their competency, they are trying to look at their skills. So if I'm a scrum master and I join another organization as a agile coach, what difference you're trying to do? You still do the same level of whatever you're doing at a scrum master. So what I would say is like, if people can understand, or if there is an enterprise agile coach, Many people, many organizations don't hire enterprise agile coaches. They take a scrum master, they take an agile coach and then say, oh, you're coming for less. So let me pick you as an enterprise agile coach. But the kind of effectiveness that enterprise agile coach can have in the organization is entirely different. So in order to answer your point, it mainly depends on the leadership, how much they are going to invest in making their people, in making their organization agile. And that is where if the leaders can understand what is agility. Yesterday in one of my class, there was a 32-year-old experienced guy in my class. So the more people, the more leaders try to give a opportunity for the uh, enterprise agile coaches and the agile coaches to understand them and to understand what they need to do as a part of their servant leadership, that will help our value of agile coaching become more and more big. I mean... Right now, the market is completely uh, uh, pro-agile. So people are getting different, different promotions, different, different hikes and all. But the real clarity on the role of an agile coach is very much determined by the organization. So we need to have a very experienced, seasoned coach in the organization to educate the leadership. So those are the questions I have and it is 1014. So thank you all for all these questions and it's a great session as usual. And Soumya, back to you. Thank you for facilitating. Yes. Uh, thank you everyone for joining this session. We hope you gained uh, valuable insights and uh, thank you, Vijay. It was a very insightful session. So we uh, are um, planning more sessions with Vijay in the coming months. So please visit our knowledge at website and get registered. Yeah. Until next time. See you all there. Thank you, Vijay. Thank you, Soumya. Thank you all. Have a good night. Yep. Thank you. Bye-bye.